Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Remnant at God's Church of Love online on our Saturday service. And I hope the word blesses you. We are reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not. Lest there be debates, envyings, wrath, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, turmoil. Right. We're dealing with strife. That's what God told me to deal with. And that is what we shall talk about. What I want to deal with is a lot of times we don't realize when we're in the middle of strife. Now, this happens in our families. This can happen with our friends, with our co-workers on the job. And we don't always know how easily it is to slip into that. But that's one of the reasons why the Bible in Galatians chapter 5 admonishes us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Because when we walk in the flesh, Jack jumps out the box. And I call the female version of Jack, Jack Arena. Jack and Jack Arena will fly out the box and they are ugly folks. I'm telling you, you do not want to contend with Jack jumping out that box, especially when you are representing Christ. So now that we are representing Christ and we're filled with his Holy Spirit, we have to know the difference so when we start to react to a situation, we react spiritually and prayerfully, hopefully, gracefully. Now I'm going to read real quick Galatians chapter 5, ver oh, verse 20 again. Wow. No, we're going to start at 19 and we're going to finish at verse 22. Because we need to see verse 23. We need to see the contrast between the, the, flesh, the works of the flesh and the works of God's Holy Spirit. All right. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Now let me go back to witchcraft just for a second. For those of you on YouTube who practice Christian White magic, Christian, witchcraft, Christian all kind. No, sorry. Witchcraft is witchcraft and God hates it. All right. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. Against, against such, there is no law. Now, this is where a lot of us as Christians fall short in our lives. Something rubs us the wrong way. Somebody on our job gets on our last nerve. Somebody gets in an argument. And sometimes we get into their argument and argue with them against someone else. We have to be very careful. I know jobs can be really, really stressful. I know we can work with some co-workers that can, oh my goodness, they seem like they're, they're not heaven sent, they're hell sent and hell bent on working your last nerve on a daily basis. I get that. Then there are times when we have family members and we don't get why they do this. Why do you do that? Why, why, why? Now, in our minds, we're thinking, God, do something with them. Help them. And God wants you to think in your mind, no, Lord, it's not my brother. It's not my sister. But me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Because no matter how many fingers you got pointing out, 
you got three fingers. Every time you point your finger to someone else and their problems, their faults, their fallacies, their shortcomings, their annoying ways, you got three fingers pointing back at you. <laughs> yeah. So always, always see when you're in a relationship with people, always take a moment with God and reassess and say, Lord, what part did I play in that? What did I say? What did I do that could have come off the wrong way? How could I have avoided that argument? What could I have said? Because I know your word says a soft answer turns away wrath. Hmm. So how could I have handled that better? How would Jesus have handled that? Sometimes before we deal with a person, the first thing we have to do is forgive. The second thing we have to do is ask God to heal our hearts. Because one of the foundation, I would say a common denominator for anger is hurt. When people start to feel like they have to defend themselves and they feel like they have to get into an, an argument about something, there's usually been an offense. Either they offended you or you offended them, and then it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And before you know it, it has escalated. Well, you said that. Well, you said, and well, well how dare you? Who do you think about? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't like the way. Well, what? And then next thing you know, spite starts slipping in between strife and wrath and unforgiveness and resentment and pulling up the past. Yeah, that's the same thing you did last year. You always do that. I hate the way you do stuff like that to me. Why? Why do you, I, you just get on my nerves. See, that's why I, I don't know how long I could be your friend. I don't know how long I can stay married to you because look at how you do that. That just gets on my last nerve. What's wrong with you? Next thing you're insulting. <laughs> Some people go as bad. Are you retarded? You're stupid or something. You must be stupid. You know, people do this to each other. And they, it's like the claws of a lion. It just comes down and rips and tears at another person's soul. And they turn around and rip and tear back at you. And then the spite, the resentment, the retaliation. It See, one thing leads to, an, to another. You cannot flush a toilet and unflush it. You can't stop it in midstream. Once that toilet begins to flush, baby, guess what? Down, 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 down. And we end up going into an emotional downward spiral. If we don't stop and pray, things can blow up in our faces. And before we know it, we have said things that, oh, I am so sorry. I mean, we have to repent for, we have done things. People have said things to us that now we have to deal with for weeks. We have to deal with the hurt, the rejection, the, the oh my goodness, the, the, the resentments, all these, this downward spiral. <clears throat> we have to be careful about that. We have to be careful. And it usually happens in families, at the job, <clears throat> choir rehearsals. Oh boy, some attitudes get to flying during choir rehearsals, during church business meetings. Whoa, help Lord. I am telling you, it can get really, really ugly. So we have to be very, very careful. We have to be mindful of what flies out of our mouth. And this is one thing that I always say, picture yourself. You got two knees you can sit on, two laps. You can sit on God's lap and let the Holy Spirit speak through you and, and calm your nerves and give you peace. 
And you can use your mind to be stayed on God so he can keep you in perfect peace, even in the midst of a storm, even in the midst of a disagreement, even in the midst of chaos. God can keep you calm. Even in the midst of being hurt, being attacked wrongfully. Now, you can sit on God's lap and you're great. Or you can choose to change laps. You can switch over and sit on the devil's lap. And the devil will take his little, his little uh, rod, stick it up your back, and manipulate your mouth and let his nasty, unclean words spew out of your mouth. Picture yourself when you get to cussing, when you get to fussing, when you get to to beating people up, cutting them and slicing them up with your words like a two-edged sword. Instead of it being the word of God, you're using the devil's words. And the devil's words come to steal, kill, and destroy. Whatever the devil does is based on that. Steal, kill, destroy. Hmm. Seek and destroy. Seek and destroy. And we think that we're justified. I get to tell you all because you had no business talking to me like that. Who the H do you think you are? I mean, and it starts to escalate. And you and the devil's got you bouncing on his lap. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Tell him. Tell him. Curse him. Curse him now. Curse him. That's right. Get him good. Get him good. That's the devil. And he's yanking your, he's yanking your cords and he's got that stick. And your mouth is going up and down and the devil's doing the talking through you. And you're letting them because you're giving place to the devil. Don't give place to the devil. When you talk to your husband or wife, when you talk to your children or your parents, to your brothers or your sisters, your co-workers, your choir members, your, your whatever, when you talk to anybody, the devil should never have one word coming through your mouth. There should be no three-letter words, no four-letter words, no five, whatever letter words you got. If they belong to Satan, they do not belong in your mouth. Your mouth is an open vessel for God to express himself in. Not the devil. Don't, don't allow the devil to come in, sit in your living room, and then you go sit on his lap. Don't allow that. You have to remember, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Now, you can say this. As for me and my mouth, M-O-U-T-H, I will serve the Lord. My mouth will serve the Lord. My attitudes will serve the Lord. See, a lot of times when we find, the, when I was <clears throat> younger in the Lord, the more offense I experienced, the more I realized it, that offense was a symptom, not of what they said, but of my own pride, of my own pride. Mm -hmm. When you are, <clears throat> when your pride rises up, so does your attitude. Now, I remember years ago when I would go to the store and a woman would do something or a man would do something. And it to me, it spoke to me of disrespect. Oh my goodness. Oh, I was ready to handle that. I was saved, you guys. Filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire. But I was ticked. How dare they? Now. When you deal with 
strifeful emotions. When you deal with being very defensive, when you find yourself being very defensive, what you have to re remember is why. A good thing to always ask God, it keeps you straight. I don't care how long you've been saved. You got to constantly do this. Okay, Lord, why is that bothering me so much? Why? Is there something wrong in my spirit? Show me if it is. Because if you're always seeing the other person as the one that's wrong, you will never grow. You will never grow. But you have to remember, there's something about me that I need to be aware of. There are times when I was joking, literally joking, you guys, playing with other people, clowning with them like I did Rashad earlier. I got them real good, too. And I was joking and clowning. And but because the people didn't know me that well, my humor did not come across as innocent. It came across as digs and sarcasm and, and attacks. And they got upset. I mean, a number of times people got upset with me. You think I joke now. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I did not want to be an offense to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I had to tone that joke and stuff down. Because I was literally playing, you guys. But unfortunately, the way I played and what I said reminded them of other people that weren't playing. And they were offended. Now, it might have hurt their pride. It might have been unhealed wounds that I stepped on, some tender corns. You know how you step on somebody's corn. I don't care how saved they are. They're liable to push you off their foot because it hurts so bad. But they're not trying to fight you. They're trying to stop the pain. So sometimes we have to watch how we react because it can look very confrontational because we're dealing with our own pain and oversensitivity and we snap and we got to watch how we snap and we have to be careful not to snap back when somebody snaps at us we have to pull in the reins of that flesh keep jack in the box keep jack down there in that box because jack has no place on the on the turf of the holy spirit the devil's words have no place in your mouth. They have no place coming out of your mouth. You should never tell anybody the F word. You should never use the SH word. You should never use the, the, the words of telling them where to go and drop dead and 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 uh and you know and and, and you're just an MF -er and all this the the B word and all these little fancy terms that we learn from the enemy's camp. We've got to be careful. Now, some of the things, the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. Sometimes you have to be very careful because some of us don't know how judgmental we are. And when we tend to be judgmental, we also come across strong. Judgmentalism comes from levels of intolerance, being judgmental on other people's faults, not wanting to be bothered, wanting to correct everybody else but yourself. And what I would always have to do when I made somebody angry, I would always say, okay, Lord, I don't like the way they handled that. I really don't like that, but I need to get the truth out of it. So I'll spit out the bones, which is the nasty attitude, but let me get the truth. Let me grow from truth, even if it's not delivered on a clean plate. Let me at least grow from truth. Truth is truth. No matter what package it comes in, truth is truth. Now, that's why the Bible says, 
you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. For example, we don't always know what's in our own heart. We don't always get it. Just like when the Holy Spirit told me while I was in the middle of a consecrated fast, the Holy Spirit told me, you are jealous of her voice. And I was like, whoa, now, yes, I repented. I stood up and, and apologized publicly so Satan wouldn't slip up on me again like that ever. But what I want to share with you is all the time that I was jealous of her, that's why we have to ask God, why am I acting like this? Why do I feel like this toward them? Why do I feel God may tell you you have not forgiven. God may tell you you are still angry. God may tell you you're jealous. God may tell you you're being judgmental. God may tell you it's your pride. You never know what he may tell you. Or it's your shame. Yeah, because we guilt trip when we know we're wrong and we don't want to hear it. So there are times that that can start an argument too. So there are times that we have to ask God, why did that rub me the wrong way so quickly? What's going on in me? Don't be so worried about straightening them out. You make sure God gets you straight first before you handle it. Because you may find out that you were really the cause. You may find out that something that you did, the way you handed something to someone, if you tossed it to them or did you put it in their hand, well, they might have read it as disrespect, but then their pride is in the in the mix too. See, I mean, all of these, there's so many undercurrents that flow through our spirits. We have to be very careful because one current can pull us out so far that it takes a long time to regain that ground again. It takes a long time to settle differences. It takes a long time to forgive because one word leads to another. Then another word leads to another. And next thing you know, you're both moving on up, but you're not moving up to the east side. You're moving up in wrath, strife, anger, rage. And when rage takes over, baby, you can go into a blackout. That's why some crimes, some murders, some killings take place with the assailant not having any recollection of what they did because they allowed their anger to get so out of control. They have no memory. They blacked out and have no recollection of inflicting pain or, or of taking another person's life. All the rage of all the years of hurt come up, welling up in their soul, and they're stabbing and stabbing and stabbing and beating and beating and bludgeoning and bludgeoning and bludgeoning, and slapping and slapping and slapping, whatever the case may be. And they look down when they come to. They're on their feet with hands full of blood, looking at a victim, a corpse, or, or a, a bludgeoned victim that now they have to call 911 and they don't know what happened. They really don't. And I, I'll tell you why they really don't. <clears throat> years ago, years ago when I was in junior high, um, I was in the fourth grade, take that back. I was in the fourth grade standing in line and I talked with my hands. And mistakenly, my hand flipped, and uh, this other young lady in the class, she and I were the same height and at the same level of development. She was wearing a training bra, and I was wearing a training bra. We were both just starting. We were the only ones in the whole elementary class that had uh, beginning the beginnings of boobs. <laughs> And uh, they were tender. You know how you develop girls, they're tender. You know, you men, I don't know if you go through that at a certain age. I know you go through the voice thing. But with women, that with, with girls, they go through a certain level of tenderness. Even when they run, it hurts. So 
and I'm talking with my hands. I'm just trying to describe to you what I'm talking about. I'm talking with my hands. My hands flail out as usual. And I'm either hitting something, knocking something off. But this time I bumped her by mistake. And when I bumped her, her initial, now we were not saved at all. Her initial response to me bumping her was she hauled off and slapped me. And I said, why? What, you know, what are you hitting me for? She, she grabbed her to her chest and said, that hurt. And I said, I'm so sorry, Margarita. I'm so sorry. So I really was sorry because I liked her. I didn't have any problems with her. She was a nice person. So anyway, so she cried and now everybody's uncomfortable. She's not talking to me and I'm not talking to her. A mistake. Anyway, so we all go to our separate neutral corner and eat our lunch in the cafeteria. And then after school, they're grabbing me talking about margarita wants to kick your butt. You know how stupid kids do. They're always instigating. And Margarita was probably too afraid to back down because they're pushing her into it too. She wasn't a troublemaker. So I told Margarita, I said, I don't want to fight you. I don't have anything against you. Uh, and the kids said, no, 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 no. Y'all going to fight. Y'all going to fight. So they're pushing us into each other. And Margarita starts. And I'm like, okay. Well, she got a hold of my hair. That was it. Now, I want to share how we black out. Listen to this. I could have taken off and ran. Sometimes a good run is better than a bad stand. Sometimes it's better to leave the conversation before you allow the conversation to leave the ground. Because once it leaves the ground, baby, ain't no telling where it's going to end up. All right. So here, she and I, are in the in 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 the middle of the of the schoolyard. The wall to the school is somewhere about 25 feet away from us. We're out in the middle of the schoolyard. She's got her hand, she grabbed my hair. And now that is hurting because Mama Sita right here was very tender-headed as a child. And she didn't do pain. So my mind Instead of seek and destroy, my mind was, <laughs> was get rid of the pain. Get rid of the pain. That's all I was geared to right then. But I'm all caught up in the moment. I'm not saved. I'm not calling on God. I don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm just trying to get rid of the pain. I'm not even mad at her. I just want to get rid of the pain. But see, here's the trip. All those years of having my feelings hurt, all those years of being offended, laughed at, made fun of, put down, picked on, rejected, ostracized, all of that started coming up, started coming up and mixing in with this very moment of just get her off my hair. And me being athletic, I grabbed her shoulders and literally shoved and walked her over to the wall because the wall was going to get her hands off of my hair. So I wrapped my hands on her hair till I got it scalp tight. And I started bashing her head up against the wall just to make her leave my hair, let go of my hair because it was hurting. Now, that's all I remember, you guys. That's where the scene stopped for me. Next thing I know, here I am bashing her head against the wall. And then in a split second, we are 25, 30 feet away from the wall. I mean, yeah, 25, 30 feet away from the wall, back out in the middle of the schoolyard. How did we get from bam, bam, bam to out in the middle of the schoolyard? Because I blacked out in the middle of the bam, bamming. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening? I'm being flung in the air. And I'm wondering, who's got me? It was one of the adults, one of the school staff that monitored the kids. Flailed me in the air, stood me on my feet, a lot of feet away from Margarita. 
Margarita, who was not crying, who, you know, we were just doing the hair thing at the time. She's bent over, holding her stomach, really bent over, with tears streaming down her face. I'm looking at her wondering, well, what happened to her? How did we get from there all the way over to here? Why is she bent over? I'm asking myself all of these questions because I don't remember. That was the day I learned not to trust my temper because the kids would tell, look what you did to her. They were saying, you kicked her in her stomach and you kept kicking her and you kept kicking her and she was on the ground and you wouldn't stop kicking her in her stomach. And I was like, no, I didn't feel any pain. I didn't feel like, no. How did, I, I was just holding her hair, making her let go of mine. How did we end up? No, nah. that blew me away. That scared me. That let me know that with all of them telling me that, it had to be true because they were really upset. They looked scared. They never picked on me again after that either, but they looked scared. And I knew they were serious. They weren't, you know, yanking my chain. And I could see the evidence, her tears. She was soaked with tears and she just stayed bent over, grabbing her stomach. And, and I mean, she could barely stand. Now, huh, that is why we cannot give place to the devil. You have no idea what unresolved issues lie under your surface. You have undercurrents you aren't even aware of yet because God has not brought you to the point of reckoning with those issues because he will when you're ready and when he's ready. But if you're not ready or you stay in denial and you wear that Christian cloak and say, I'm good because I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, so old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's true, but our become new is progressive. Our becoming new, which means that old stuff is still being dealt with by God. He hasn't forgotten it because he knows he's got to deal with it. If he doesn't deal with it, Satan will. And if you're not in the right mind, you will allow him to. So you have to be careful how you allow your emotions to fly off the handle, how you allow your mouth to just say whatever you want to say. You have to guard your reactions, guard your heart, guard your mind, guard your spirit, because you could be a deadly weapon in the devil's hands. You can. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire. I know of a couple who dearly loved each other. I know they did. They would sit with me and counsel, counsel with their pastor, counsel with some of the other ministers in our church. Just beautifully. Now, I hadn't thought about these guys in years, so I know God wants me to deal with this. And this couple, she was drop dead gorgeous and he looked like little Mr. Peabody. He was a nerd to the bone, sweet as could be, brilliant mind. He was an electrician. And the two of them got married. And they would sit and talk about some of their differences and how they cherished each other, but they both knew that they had issues with uncontrollable temper. Hmm. They were seeking help, thank God. But the one time they should have run, they, you remember I said, uh, my, my former pastor Cushman used to say this, a good run is better than a bad stand. <laughs> and they should have run away from each other at this point. But they allowed the argument to leave the ground and escalate. And once it was airborne, baby, it went totally out of control. 
Satan got in there. And before you knew it, they were doing blows with each other, physical blows. They had never done that before, but they both allowed their tempers to have its way. And as a result, he was beaten to a pulp. But while he was being beaten to a pulp, he grabbed a hold to a pole, a little steel rod. And before he knew it, he was bashing and bashing and beating and bashing and wailing away and all his anger and all the years of hurt, all the stuff from the old days started welling up. And before you knew it, he was looking at his wife's body, lifeless body. After a couple of days, he turned himself in because he couldn't live with it anymore. He told his pastor, I don't even remember doing that to her. I just saw the rod in my hand with her blood and I'm all beat up and she was laying there dead. I think I killed my wife. That's why we have to be careful. If we don't hurt someone else, we'll turn around and do something to hurt ourselves. Don't you dare let the devil have his way in your life. Don't you dare. This stuff is serious. You've got to be careful. These are the last days and these demons are coming out like swarms like swarms, you guys. And you've got to be very, very careful not to give place to the, de to, to the enemy. Don't give place to the devil. A soft answer turns away wrath. Sometimes no answer can turn away wrath. You just walk away, run away, do whatever. Just get out of there. I've seen men get so angry they wanted to haul off and they grab their keys instead storm out the door and run down the street or get in the car and drive away because they knew if they stayed, they'd do something they had never done before. they beat their wife down. you got to be careful. A good run is better than a bad stand. Conversations going south, stop it. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we're going to stop this and shut it down right now in the name of Jesus, because I love my husband or I love my wife or I love this or I love that. Lord, we are not going to allow ourselves to get caught up in an argument because that's not what we're trying to do. So Lord, when we're ready, when you're ready, you let us know and we'll handle this in the right spirit. But for right now, I'm out of here. Do whatever you got to do. Get God in there real quick when you see it starting to go south. Shut your mouth and leave. Now, I don't know who this is for. See, I, I know the people that are in our church, God's Church of Love. But I don't know about you on YouTube. I don't know what you're dealing with, what you're living through. I don't know what kind of stress you're under. I don't know what kind of wounds you're trying to navigate your life through. You know, we learn pain management through the world, but God knows pain removal. He will take your trash out and get rid of it if you ask him to. See, but just cause you're cute, just cause you're handsome, just cause you got money, just cause you got a profession, just cause you have a degree, just because you have a whole lot of political connections and you know a lot of rich folks and you know a lot of people with clout and you've got position and you're on this board and on that board and all of that just because you got all that going on does not mean that you don't have issues the bible says don't think more highly of yourself than you ought mm -mm. No, you don't want to do that. He who thinks he stands, take heed, lest you fall. Don't get so high and mighty that everybody else is at fault but you. You be careful with that. Because it's right when you think 
that you're okay and you're good with God, that the devil will come up and rub your behind in your face. And then there's nothing but shame and regret. You don't want to go through that. You don't want to give the devil an inch. He won't take a mile. He'll try to take your life. Don't give him an inch. Don't give him one word. <sighs> Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you help us know how to deal with stressful situations. That we don't get caught up in arguments, debates, strife, wrath, rage. We ask you in the name of Jesus to teach us not to give place to the enemy. And we thank you, Lord. Give us self-control in every way, shape, and form. And heal our hearts from the old wounds that would try to be used as fuel by the enemy to cause us to explode. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So I say to you, pray before you say. Always pray before there's anything for you to say. You hear me? God bless you.